Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call us right now for more help at 866-945-8070. Okay, so we're using recurring transactions in QuickBooks Online, and we're going to do it for every monthly bill because I've, I've seen, I've had my own processes where I kept a list outside of QuickBooks of all the bills and approximately what day of the month they come in and when they're due and all that. And I realized that since we have a feature like recurring transactions in QuickBooks Online, it's silly. That's a redundancy. It's doing the work twice. Why not just set them all up as recurring bills right here in QuickBooks Online and then arrange it so that they go off 30 days before the due date? Even if that's not the actual bill date, who cares? The bill is going to show up as an expense in the month before it's due, which is going to work fine for most cases. Uh, Some of you are going to ask, what about cash basis? I don't care about cash basis because I'm not filing a tax return here. I'm running a business, and when you're running a business, you absolutely must do everything on an accrual basis. Cash basis has one purpose and one purpose alone, which is to get a tax return filed because you're a cash basis taxpayer, but you're still on an accrual basis business. Come and argue with me. Post your comments. I can't wait to have them. I will prove you all wrong if you disagree with me on this particular thing. Now, how to do the recurring transactions. Uh, we go into the gear icon, and right here is recurring transactions. And so, for example, if I have a credit card bill, that credit card bill, let's say let's say it's an American Express bill, that's typically due around the 15th. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to enter a bill as the type of transaction. And I'll call it Amex-1234 because I might have more than one Amex account. The vendor is going to be Amex or American Express. I'll add them real quick. Okay, and every month uh, the bill is going to be due on the 15th of the month, which means I want it to go off, uh, you know, on the 15th of every month do with 30-day uh, terms, right? That's how I do these. So if I'm setting this up today and it's August 21st, and I've already passed August 15th, but I can still do it because I can actually set this one up to, uh, wait, I take that back. I can't do this one. I, it has to start next month. So the start date would actually be September 15th, right? So that's going to come in with a due date of around October 15th. So if I haven't yet entered the August bill, that's going to be due sometime around September 15th. Then I've got to add that separately from this. This is just to get it set up going forward. If I'm here at the 21st of the month and I'm doing this for something that's due the 15th and I haven't already entered that bill, then you'll need to enter it separately. Or I can show you how you can use this transaction on a one-time basis, even though it's there, Um, even though it's here as a memorized bill. So the account would, of course, be the American Express credit card Uh, account. So let me just add that in here real quick. Uh, Credit card, Amex, one, two, three, four, and save and close. Now the bill is going to be different every month. So what I usually do is put estimate 500 per month, minimum payment, whatever it is. And then over here, another note saying get correct bill amount. That way this goes in as a reminder And the language is right there, and that's going to show up when I run the report. So first, let's save this template, okay, because that's all I need. Remember, we're setting it up for the next time we're going to hit that day of the month that we want this to go off. And remember that the start date is going to be the first bill date, which means if we're doing this based on 30 days, then this is going to be the bill that we're expecting to be due and payable around, in this case, October 15th, right? So I'm going to save the template, and then I want to use it to get the current month's bill in. So over here next to edit, I'm going to type, I'm going to click use. And it brings it all in. Of course, at this point, I have the right amount. Let's say it was 750, right? But let me just, uh, actually, let's say I don't have the amount yet because I want to show you what this looks like on the report. So it comes in, the bill date is 820, 30-day terms. Let me backdate this, right? Because then it comes out about right. Let's save this. And then let me look at my unpaid bills report. Right, there it is, Amex. So it shows up, right? It's a negative past due date means it's not due yet. So, and there it is. So now automatically this is going to show up on the 15th of every month with a due date of around the 15th of the following month. And the idea is to never forget about it and to never pay it late. And then as I'm reviewing these bills each week and I see this and I see that it's for $500, I can click in here. I can go log into Amex, get the correct bill amount. I can update the transaction and save it. And now it's ready to be paid whenever I'm going to pay it, 
right? So that's the process for using recurring bills. And I do this for every bill, for every utility bill, every uh, a credit card bill, any line of credit, anything that I know we pay every single month. And if you want a quick way to figure out what those uh, bills are, then what you can do is you can go into reports and let's go into the sales by, or no, expenses by vendor, summary, Okay, and you can run year to date, total this by month, because now you can get a sense of who the people are that are getting paid every single month consistently. In this sample company file, you don't have a good data set to show what that looks like, but you would see a lot of the bills, a lot of the payees where there's a, p a bill every single month for that vendor. So that will give you a clue as to who you need to start setting this up for. If you or the client doesn't have something already in place, like in a spreadsheet somewhere, the one I recently did, we built off of my client's spreadsheet that he had been using to keep track of this. Now let's look at the process for actually getting the bills paid because I mentioned this in the write-up and I mentioned that I have a course on this website called Remarkable Reports for Bookkeepers that will take what I'm going to show you now in a couple of minutes and it goes much further and it shows you how to create a really cool set of reports that I've done with clients over the years and every time I do it with a client they absolutely love it. So what do we do? We run the unpaid bills report and I just dump it right into Excel. I wish, please into it, please hear me, please hear this request, please create an export to Google Sheets. It would make this so much easier. Um, so we're gonna dump this here into this folder, and then I'm gonna click to open it. And it opened up my other screen, bear with me while it finishes opening. Great, I'm gonna bring it in here, and I don't need to pay the Amex bill yet, this one's not due for a while, but let's say we just want to knock it off. I just say equals, and I point to the open balance. If I want to partially pay a bill, like this one is due in two days, but let's say I don't have enough money to pay it. Let's just say I want to pay 350 towards that, right? And then this one's due in 26 days. The rest of these are okay. We can wait, right? Um, let's first of all format this column for numbers, right? I don't need this in here. And let's freeze some panes so I can see what I'm doing further down. All right, total to be paid. I think it was this column I did that in. Probably should have given it a header. And I do it two columns out because sometimes in here I want to write comments, especially because the use case is that I'm going to send this to a client and have them review and confirm it. Because I want that email, or in my case, it's usually more likely going to be a Slack message these days. So I'll take this file, I'll drop it into Slack, and then the client will comment confirming, yeah, go ahead and pay those bills. And then I'll jump over into bill.com, which I've usually got set up for clients like this, and we'll pay it. The other thing you might do if you're the accountant trying to do this for a client is uh, maybe drop the current bank balance in. And always put the date that you got the balance because you know what happens. Somebody will come, somebody eventually will come and say, you gave me the wrong balance, and it'll be a whole argument. So just cover your ass. Um, so let's say the bank balance is 1500, and then equals the bank balance minus the bills to pay, so we can see. And then you just say under, over to cover bills, right? Boom. And now I can send this to the client. The client's really happy because I'm doing something really cool for them. I'm making it really easy for them to decide and confirm. Yeah, go ahead and pay these bills. Now I've got the comment. I've got it documented. The client confirmed their approval to pay the bills. I go into bill.com. I click, click, click. Three bills. Pay. Done. And everything else is done for me because I'm using bill.com with QuickBooks Online. So everything from there is automatically synced and done. And that's my process for making sure that I never forget a bill, never lose a bill, and don't have to count on getting that bill sent to me by a service or anybody else because I've built in a process using QuickBooks Online recurring transaction feature to make sure that I just create the bills each and every month. This, by the way, will also, it's talking about cash versus accrual, it will normalize your bill posting. So a lot of times I'll see where the rent amount is uh, inconsistent, right? It's zero one month and it's double the next because what happened, they paid maybe a couple of days early one month to make sure they got it in on time. And you know, and so you end up with two payments in the same month that really refer to two different months. Again, cash basis would say that's the way it should look. But as I said earlier, I don't care about cash basis. I want normalized expenses so I can see what did it really cost me to operate that month, which means I don't want two months rent stacked in a single month. I want them separated and having a bill for each month will accomplish that. Further, 
Furthermore, when the payment does clear, it'll come down in the bank feed and automatically get uh, posted as a payment on that bill, which of course you'll get to confirm. But QuickBooks Online is very smart like that. In the bank feeds, it, you don't have to go enter a bill payment. It will see the amount, it will see the payee, it will see that that matches to a bill that's been recorded in QuickBooks, and it will post it for you as a transaction on that bill, as a payment on that bill, which you'll get to confirm just in case for some reason it's wrong. And then you'll get to confirm it, and that's that. And then when I run my monthly profit and loss, everything's normalized. I have everything recorded in the right period. That, my friends, is what it's all about when you use recurring transactions in QuickBooks Online for every monthly bill. As always, I hope you learned something here, had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.